Erklärung dafür, was dieses Wetter verursacht hat. Meteorologists are at a loss to explain what is causing this weather and why it has taken five surprise. It is the agenda for the 21st century you're living in today. For a brave new world where everything that you cherished and held true will no longer exist. New Zealand has been hit by a second powerful earthquake only hours after a 7.5 magnitude tremor killed at least two people. Some communities on the country's South Island remain completely cut off after the initial quake badly damaged roads and other key infrastructure. Earlier, New Zealand's Prime Minister John Key visited the popular tourist destination of Keikura, one of the worst affected areas. The tremors have triggered a series of major landslides as well as a tsunami of up to five metres high, forcing thousands of people to flee to higher ground. And authorities have warned the worst may not yet be over, with fears more aftershocks may follow. A strong aftershock with a magnitude of 6.2 shook New Zealand's South Island on Monday. And that's after a 7.8 magnitude earthquake rocked the same region earlier in the same day, triggering landslides and a small tsunami. The quake struck South Island just after midnight in a mostly rural area. Near the epicenter, it caused fissures in roads and started landslides. Two people were killed. This is a bad time of the year for brush fires and then add a drought on top of that. Firefighters are at it again. Pretty rough go for a while. Another brush fire, this time in Fairview. We have now 75 firefighters on the ground. 40 to 50 acres burned around a home and a bed breakfast. A fire started over there. Tony Vincent is a property owner. He only knew about the fire after his neighbors saw the plume of smoke. Uh, we were over there fighting a the fire with shovels and Breaks. Fire officials believe a guest dumped out ash from a fireplace that was still hot. But we do have a huge problem with brush fires getting started. Saying it's a problem may be an understatement. Burn bans are in effect for many counties because of the drought. It is so bad that even fires in East Tennessee and bordering states are affecting the mid-state. On Sunday, calls of the smell of smoke flooded communication centers such as Wilson and Rutherford counties. The smoke blanketed much of the region. The haze so thick it looked like fog, as you can see here in downtown.
Well, one thing that hasn't been seen in the sky lately is rain, at least not enough of it. Drought conditions continue to linger across parts of western Massachusetts. In fact, they've gotten worse. The Massachusetts Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs recently declared a drought warning for most of the state. While parts of the state did receive some rainfall last month, many locations are running more than 10 inches below average for the year. Just north of the equator, the foothills of the Ruwenzori Mountains are covered in thick rainforest and full of water. Cool, crystal clear rivers bring it down to the lowlands, where thousands of people depend on agriculture. And they're struggling with increased dry spells and irregular, heavier rains, as is happening in many other parts of the world. Grace Birungi says poor harvest means she struggles to pay school fees for her children. About a week's walk from the market up into the mountains, is a stark example of the world's changing climate. On top of the mountains sit glaciers, most of which have already melted. While representatives of governments from around the world meet in Morocco to discuss climate change, we're climbing up to see what's left. The mountain range is a nature reserve. It's home to many extraordinary looking species of plants and animals, such as the Johnson's chameleon. Many species are found only here. The ecosystem is unique. George Habasa monitors the changes here for the Uganda Wildlife Authority. He told us 40 square kilometers of plant life were destroyed four years ago. A long dry spell led to a fire and then floods on a scale never seen before. The vegetation's growing back, but scientists don't know what the changing weather and the melting glaciers will bring in future. We walked through rain and then hailstorms, which our guides said are now only seen at higher altitudes than before. And after days of walking, we've reached a place with a clear view of Mount Stanley. The highest glacier sits on top. That's the one we're trying to reach. To the right is Mount Baker. You can see the permanent glacier there, the small white patch. To this side is Mount Luigi di Savoia, which also used to have a permanent glacier about 10 years ago. But because of increasing temperatures, it's already gone. Scientists say all the Ruwenzori glaciers will be gone in the next 10 to 20 years. How that will affect this remarkable conservation area and the people who live around it is unknown. Clear skies permitting, sky watchers will be in for a rare astronomical treat this evening. A supermoon is set to grace Europe's skies. Coming nearer to Earth than at any point since 1948, it should appear about 7% larger and a third brighter than the smallest full moon. Spain had its first glance last night. At closest approach, the moon is set to pass within just under 350,000 kilometers of Earth's surface. That's around 35,000 kilometers closer than average.
The full moon has not been this close to Earth since 1948. It will reach the peak of its full phase at 8.52 a.m. Eastern, but the stronger gravitational pull is amplifying the seasonal king tide and creating heightened flood risk in places like South Florida. This is exclusive video from Chopper 5, the only local helicopter covering breaking news first and fast. As you can see, water is splashing on the roads as the fullest of moons is causing rising waters. Whoa. For the first time in history, bees have been placed on the endangered species list. Seven species of yellow-faced bees were placed on the list several weeks ago. Protection for those species officially starts on Monday. While all the endangered bees are located in Hawaii, the fact that they're on the list is significant. I think that it's really good that we're recognizing the importance of pollinators. And as we recognize the impact that these species are having on our agriculture and our ability to eat the things we want to eat, I think that that's a good thing. Honeybees are not included on the list, but worldwide population declines continue. The honeybee is not on the endangered species list, but it, it doesn't matter. Without a beekeeper to manage the bees, the, the, the honeybee, Apis mellifera, would be on the endangered species list overnight. With Zika cases growing by the day, some mosquito experts say releasing genetically modified male mosquitoes into the environment could help stop the spread. Anastasia Mosquito Control District Education Specialist Christopher Bibbs says the experiment has had success in other countries. These males find females and mate with them, but their offspring, they have sort of like a faulty biology to them now because of this modification, and then they have a 100% die-off rate. The mosquito being targeted is the Aedes aegypti, a carrier for the Zika virus. Florida now has more than 1,100 cases and now a small Florida Keys community could potentially become the first in the country to test genetically modified mosquitoes. And if it works, this could open up a different playbook, you could say, for how we treat disease and how we deal with mosquito-borne illness. Tropical bedbugs are re-emerging across Florida. We're talking about a bedbug that can spread at double the rate of normal bedbugs. It's basically a creepy, crawly cousin of the bed bug, only worse. Jen Holloway is live in our Tampa News Center with more on where this little critter is rearing its ugly head. Jen, this is gross. <laughs> My skin is crawling already. Well, this takes the old saying, don't let the bed bugs bite to an entirely new level. Tropical bed bugs are apparently creeping back into the Sunshine State for the first time since the 1940s. It's one of the nastiest kinds of bed bugs, and it's capable of spreading misery fast, far and wide. Plus, they're attracted to humans. They uh, are stimulated when we go to bed at night. We, we release a pheromone, 
and then from that fair mound, uh, that attracts them. And it's now confirmed they were found in South Florida in a home on Merritt Island. But tropical or not, bed bug problems are becoming more and more frequent, along with the misery left behind after they leave their calling card. Swollen, red, itchy spotches on your skin. And the more they munch, the more they reproduce. You get a female who gets a blood meal from someone, um, she can lay thousands of eggs and may not need another blood meal for some time, for weeks and weeks and weeks. Unfortunately, these pests are almost impossible to find and hard to kill unless sprayed directly and repeatedly. So this newest bed bug addition, the tropical bed bug, only makes this problem even that much more difficult. I spoke to a local pest control company this afternoon, and after recently being alerted by University of Florida researchers, they have been consistently sending in samples of the bed bugs that they're finding here in the Bay Area. Even they can't tell the difference. As far as the eye can see, thousands of solar mirrors, beaming solar energy to a tower rising from the desert floor. When completed, it will be 240 meters high, the world's tallest solar thermal tower powered by 55,000 mirrors spread over an area the size of 400 football pitches. The $700 million project in Israel's Negev Desert started in 2014. Specialist contractors brought in from Turkey, Spain, Uruguay, and other countries are building the facility that will provide 1% of Israel's renewable energy needs. China and the U.S. are jointly improving their rescue and disaster relief capabilities. A six-day joint exercise is taking place at a military base in southwestern China's Yunnan province. More than 100 Chinese soldiers, 89 U.S. forces, are participating there. As one of his goals in reforming the armed forces, President Xi Jinping has said it's important to build cooperation with other militaries and international organizations. Chinese President Xi Jinping has spoken with U.S. President-elect Donald Trump to reaffirm the importance of relations between the U.S. and China. He told Trump that cooperation is the only correct choice for their countries. There is speculation about how they will address climate change as Trump may be looking to withdraw from the Paris Climate Change Agreement, which had been a point of cooperation between China and U.S. President Barack Obama. European Union foreign ministers met for an emergency dinner on Sunday to try to work out their best approach to a Donald Trump presidency. The U.S.-Europe relationship has been cast into disarray by the election of a man most European leaders have criticized. Demonstrators nationwide are expected to march for a fifth straight day to protest Donald Trump's election. Tens of thousands marched in streets across the United States on Saturday. The protests held in big cities such as Los Angeles, New York, and Chicago, as well as smaller ones, were largely peaceful. But in Portland Saturday night, it turned violent. Police used flashbangs to disperse crowds. Several people were arrested, including two involved in a shooting that left one protester injured. Iraqi soldiers have retaken an ancient Assyrian city overrun by Islamic State militants two years ago. A military statement said its 9th Armored Division also liberated the town of Nimrud, which is about one kilometer west of the ruins of the 3,000-year-old city, which was once the capital of the Assyrian Empire. stand on the edge of a great new era. A great new era. We built this great industrial powerhouse. The whole idea of industrial capitalism in the West, government that was going to invest in infrastructure. It is a time for pathfinders and pioneers. What happened to the American century? The share of income that we put into infrastructure has gone down starkly. If you travel around the country, there's just not that much that's new. What happened to America's ideal of progress? All these things that have been established after the Great Depression fell apart. 
you'll see that whole streets are just closing down. A community that's undereducated, underemployed. Baltimore was a blue collar town. Now the air quality is wonderful because there's no industry here anymore. It's beyond life. Detroit had a population of about 2 million people in 1950. It's now a little over 600,000. A huge percentage of the budget goes to the military. This is an economy that's based to a large degree on killing people. If you were to cut the military budget in half, we'd have a depression. So they're literally working full time and making poverty wages. You have 1,600 vacant houses. It's insane. They said, let's save a few dollars and pump the water in from the Flint River. Decades and decades of being ignored. Americans are finding themselves in a desperate situation. They're a new state. A lot of talented people here, but you would never know because of the reputation we got. If you're an entrepreneur right now in America, the last thing you want to do is take risks. This is not a world I want to take risks. America is not the pillar of democracy and freedom that it was once seen to be. Here we are, naked in front of the world. It's a real tragedy.